In this video, we're going to catch monsters. We're going to take it in three steps. The first step is to clean up the old code that's going to get in our way. The second step is to create a store that is an array of monsters and then add to that store by clicking on one of the monsters. And then the third step is to display that in our layout and in our My Monsters page. Step one is to clean up some of this old code. So previously we had it so you could add monsters that would end up with their IDs in the query params, but you could only ever add two. And so we're going to first take away that ability. And in the next step, we're going to change it so you can add as many as you want in an array. So let's go ahead and remove this if is interactive, where we're adding monster two. So that's gone. And then we're going to remove this is interactive. There we go, because we're going to have a different way of representing the monster that we've caught rather than having non-interactive ones up here. And we'll go ahead and update this. So we do not need the is interactive here anymore. And we also are not going to want to have these two representations up here, which means we don't need these either. And will we need update search params? Well, yes, we still will need that because we're going to want to keep the generation stored up there. However, I don't think we need it in the monsters component. We will be replacing it with something else, but we won't need it for now. So let's go ahead and replace it for now with uh, catch monster. And this catch monster will feed in the monster ID. And then we will define it right here. It's not doing anything right now. And so with that done, we have completed step one. We have cleaned up a lot of our old code that's not useful anymore. Now we're ready to actually build the feature we want. What we want is when we click this, it adds it to a global array of caught monsters. And so a great way to do that is with a store. So we're going to go ahead and create a new file and we're going to create the lib folder and then the stores.ts file. And here we're going to import writable. So we're going to have a writable store and this will be our caught monsters and this will be a empty array to start with in our monster component let's go ahead and import that so we're going to import the caught monsters from and our autocomplete is not perfect there all right so we've got that and let's go ahead and we'll make it so we have a couple choices here we could store just the id or we could store the entire monster object. And let's go ahead and store the entire monster object for reasons that will become clear once we get to the My Monsters page. All right, so we're going to feed in the monster. And actually, we don't need to feed it in because we're in the component. There's only one monster. So there we go. And that means we can do this as well. Shorten that up. All right, so just to make sure that's happening, let's go ahead and click here and log in our monsters. Good. We've got that going. Now let's go ahead and update our cop monsters. So we'll have our cop monsters and we will call dot update and we'll get the previous monsters and what we'll return is just all the previous monsters plus the new one. And let's see why that's giving us an error. Okay, so the error here is of the type of the store. And so what we want to do is we'll bring in the writable type here and we'll say that this is a writable store and the type of data that we're storing in it is an array of index monsters. And that should 
yep, that makes our TypeScript issue go away. It's very happy with what we're returning now. So let's go ahead and make these show up. So we'll start off with the relatively simple version of this. So we're going to import caught monsters and of course make sure to spell that right. And then we're going to put the length of the caught monsters in here. All right. And we put the dollar sign in because it's a store, so we wanna get the value. And yep, this is working as we expect. Now let's go ahead and put those monsters in the My Monsters page. So we'll go ahead and here we will bring in our script tag and of course have our language as TS. And then we'll go ahead and import the cop monsters as well as the monster component. And we need to go up one for that. All right, and so here, yep, there we go. And that is displaying all of our cop monsters. Of course, we'll want to make them so they line up horizontally. So to do that, we'll bring in, first we'll have our wrapping div with the class of monsters. And then we will go ahead and in our style tag, put in our styles that we did from the main page. And with that, there we go. Later, we'll make some changes to differentiate these monsters from the monsters on the home page, but for now, we can go ahead and keep them the same. And so there we have it. Now we know how to catch monsters and display them in different pages. However, you may notice something. When we reload the page, all our monsters disappear. So in the next episode, we're gonna be showing how to save those in local storage so that we can keep our running list of monsters.